Hi, this video is to talk about cross-tab queries in Microsoft Access. Cross-tab queries are a little bit different than what we've gone over so far, and it's also important to note that many programs can't do these. So it's a nice feature of Access that will allow us to summarize data in a useful way. So let's jump into a question. First, here's the question. What is the total amount of cash receipts each employee collected from each customer? Now, if we just stop there, we'll show you what that could potentially look like. So I have here an example query. I'll right click and open it in design view. You can see I have the customer table, the employee table, and the cash receipts table. And I just list the customer names, the first name, last name of, or the employee names, the first and last name of the customers, and then I sum up the amount. Now, uh, this will be talked about in a later video, but using totals, you can tell it to, to aggregate the data. When I run this, you can see I get a list of all the employees and all the customers and how much they've collected. Now, this isn't the most useful way to format the data. It's hard to see and compare employees. For example, two different employees have collected money from customers, and, and it's hard to see and compare those. So what we want to do is present it in a different way. It might say something like this. Display the results so that each customer who has a cash collection is listed on a row, and each employee name is listed in its own column. Display in the final query these fields in this order. Customer name. Uh, which lists customer first name and last name in one field, and then each employee name, first name and last name, as a column. So what that's saying is, rather than list the employees here, list the employees across the top and keep the sums in that. Now to do that, we're going to have to do a cross-tab query. To create a cross-tab query, we come up and we click Query Design. And up here, you'll notice there's several different types of queries. There's Select, which is what we're using most often. When a select query is saved, it looks like this down here in the Queries section. So that's the example I just showed you. There's also you can make tables, append, update. The one we're going to talk about is Crosstab. So if I click on Crosstab, you'll notice down here this little thing pops up that says Crosstab. So for this question, we're going to need those same cash receipts, customer, and employee. Now the first thing we need to do is list the employee name. So I'm going to type that in, and we wanted to combine the first name and the last name of the employee. Now, I can type in this, or I'm going to show you just another way to do this of going to the Builder. If you go into Builder, you can actually go to the tables and say this is for employee names. So if I pull up the employee table, it's going to list the, the different fields in that table. So if I double click on that, I need to delete the expression because I already named it with employee name. You'll notice that it puts in the table name, and then the explanation point, and the field name. And We need to do this because if you remember, there's a first name and a first name in both, so we have to tell it which table. So if I concatenate that with the and sign, and it did want first name and then last name. The thing I like about this expression builder is just clicking, I can make sure I don't write things incorrectly. So I've got employee name. I'm going to do the same thing here with Builder, but I'm going to call this Customer Name. I'll go into my table, Customer, put in the first name. Again, delete that expression because I already named it Customer Name, and put in the last name. All right, so now I have the employee name and the customer name. And then the other thing I need to show is the amount. So I'll, I'll drop amount down in here. and you're going to talk in another video about uh, aggregation and subtotals. So this total, we won't go into great detail, but what I want to do is the total amount, so I'm going to sum that up for each customer employee name combination. Now what we need to look at is this cross tab. When I click on that, I can suggest row headings, column headings, or values. So in this problem, it said display the results so that each customer who has a cash collection is listed on a row. So if I come to customers, I'm going to say, hey, I want that to be the row heading, and I want the employee names to be the column heading. And then the amount is going to be the value. So once I've done this, I can click Run, and you'll notice how it creates the data and shows it a little bit differently. Each unique employee is listed across the top. Now, it's not going to find, follow our naming conventions because we put a space in there. You can change that depending on what you're wanting to do. If this is a final report, we might want it like this. But then customer names are listed in the rows, and you can see that we can see when the customer or when the employee collected from the customer. So Alan Mays is 
collected from both, but Addison Black has only had collections from Bob Boone. All right, so that's how you do a cross-tab query. Again, the key features are that you make sure you change the type of query, and that it, you then use this cross-tab here. Now, one more thing. If you want something else on the rows, for example, the customer name, I might want to also list customer email. I can click and drag email down. Doesn't matter where you put it, but I'm also going to put this as a row heading. And so when I run it, now I will also have that information for the customer. Now it's not going to work so well if I put in the phone number of the employee and try to list this as a column heading. It won't allow me to do that because you can only have one column heading. So you can put multiple things on the row. If I wanted to do that, I'd have to pivot my data or rotate it in a different way. But that sums up how to use cross-tab queries.